Alright, so I'm going to show you guys a really nifty design for the life cycle of a mobile application that was actually developed by Google for their Android mobile operating system. Which, uh, this in particular design is what allows them to do multitasking on the phone, something the iPhone didn't have until this was released, which gave Google an advantage. So, let's say you open your mobile phone and you want to check your email. Well, what happens to the app first? It starts. And then it runs for a while. <laughs> and later on, it goes away. Okay. So this is obviously just a serial app, but nothing else happens. And what you have to do when you're writing it is write functions to tell it what to do along the way. So what's the first thing you have to have an app do when you start it? You have to create something. And the last thing you do before you shut down, you have to destroy something. Like a building. Now these words are really descriptive, and conveniently in the Google API, the functions are also based off this word. So the function that you overwrite to destroy your object is actually on destroy. Anybody want to guess what the function for create is? On create. Nice. Alright. So that's what happens there. After you create something, before you run it, you have to start it. So that's the next step. Likewise, before you destroy something, you have to stop it. Alright. That says start. Sorry, what? Yes. Thank you. Good, that means you can read my handwriting. <laughs> Alright, so if nothing was interrupting, this is exactly how the program would run. But because it's multitasking, if you're running and like Ben's checking his email and Eric sends him a text, the text is going to pop up on top of it. So if another app interrupts right here, this program, it knows about it and so it pauses. And then, once the user resumes, once it comes to the forefront again, it does exactly that. It resumes. Yeah, sorry. Okay. <coughs> so there are a couple... Yes? What's the forefront? Oh, I'm sorry. The forefront is like... On a mobile phone, it's got a limited screen, so it's kind of the active window. Like, you think of it in terms of using a desktop, it's the window in front that you're looking at. So when a text message pops up, it's on top of the other one. Yep. So there are a couple other ways you can be interrupted. Um, the on-pod message is really for things that are small, like a text that pops up, but if you switch to a whole different window, like if you're in email and go to, like, your music player, then it goes here. It goes to on-stop. So this is a full interrupt. And when it stops, it does a bunch of different messages for the application. And when it resumes, where do you think it needs to go again? What matches on the other side? Great. Now you probably want to do something different if you're starting for the second time than you are for the first. So there's actually one additional method that's on restart. One minute. Okay. And the last thing you need to do, and this is uh, really the point of this entire thing and how it works, is if you are stopped or, pa or if you are stopped or paused, you're not really that important. So if the phone needs memory, it can just kill you. So if you're in either of these spots, it'll kill the application. And then if you ever want to go back to it, we have to start all over again. So I should go here, back to on create. So, literally, you go through like a normal application. If anything happens in between, you just follow all these arrows, go back to the method where you uh, went along the line the first time, and eventually go back to running, and then all the way to stop. So how do you get to the, the, the dying thing? This? 
Oh, sorry. Um, this is from either on pause or on stop. Uh, basically, if your method is in, or if your program is kind of in hibernation, and the phone decides you have too many open and needs the memory, it'll just kill them temporarily. Um, it'll alert these programs that that's what it's done, kill it, and when they go back to uh, bring it to be active again, it'll just start over on screen. Is the kill, uh, does that call an on kill or an on destroy method? No, it does not actually, which is why it loops back to the front instead of onto the shutdown, because the program actually probably needs to store data. It's like the difference if your computer crashes while you're using Microsoft Word versus when you shut it down. When you open it again, when it opens up, it'll have those like restored versions of the documents. So it saves some of that data. Cool. Yep. Alex, did you have a question?